Hi, my name is Mr. Garino. I am a teacher at Harrison High School. I'm making some web development tutorials for my students. In the last tutorial, we made a simple web page by writing some HTML code. In this tutorial, we will add some CSS code to add some styling to our HTML content. What is CSS? CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. CSS describes how HTML elements are to be displayed. CSS saves a lot of work. It can control the layout of multiple web pages all at once. External style sheets are stored in CSS files. CSS solved a big problem. HTML was never intended to contain tags for styling a web page. Even though we know that text in an H1 tag should have a bigger font than text in a P tag, the exact type, size, color, etc. of the font should be specified in a CSS document. HTML was created to describe the content of a web page, like H1, and then inside there you put this is a heading or welcome to my website, and then a P tag for your paragraphs. So that's what's on a web page, the content. When tags like font and color attributes were added to the HTML 3.2 specification, it started a nightmare for web developers. Development of large websites where fonts and color information were added to every page became a long and expensive process. Basically, you have to go in, if you want to change the color of something on the bottom where you say contact us and you have some information down there and that's on every single page and you want to change the color of that, you have to go to every page and change it. We don't want to do that. So to solve this problem, the World Wide Web Consortium, W3C, created CSS. CSS removed styling from the HTML page. CSS syntax, meaning how you have to type it in to make it work. A CSS rule set consists of a selector and a declaration block. And this graphic gives you representation of what it's supposed to look like. So the selector would be like your H1 or your P, your body. Uh, declaration, we're saying color and then we're saying it's going to be blue. So the declaration contains two parts, the property, color, and the value, blue. The next declaration says we want the font size, that's the property, to be 12 pixels, that's the value. So you can have many declarations for a particular selector, and each declaration has a property and a value. The selector points to the HTML element you want to style. The declaration block contains one or more declarations separated by semicolons. No, yes, semicolons. Here we have, let me bring up my pen, sorry, just in case people are confused with this. This is a colon, it separates the property and the value. This is a semicolon, it separates the declarations. So you can have more than one declaration uh, separated by a semicolon. Each declaration includes a CSS, CSS property name and a value separated by a colon, as I just pointed out. A CSS declaration always ends with a semicolon, and a declaration blocks and declaration blocks are surrounded by curly braces curly braces. Where's my pen? Here we go. Curly brace. That's what we call a curly brace. Open your index.html file in Notepad and add the following code inside the head element. Now we're going to read it off on the slide first, but then I'm going to go do it. So you can wait until I do it to follow along. We're going to add this link um, relative equals style sheet. Um, relationship uh, type text CSS and each reference is the actual link it's main.css the code above links your CSS file to your HTML file 
the code basically says that your HTML file has a style sheet relationship with a CSS text file and the name of it is main.css. While we are adding the style sheet link in the head element, let's also add the code for the character encoding inside the head element as noted below. Should have really did this in the HTML tutorial, but I forgot. Happens. And so we're going to add this meta character set equals, or char set stands for character set, UTF 8. If you remember, we saved our HTML file as UTF 8. Um, and now we're actually telling the browser that that's the way we worked it, or that's how we saved it. So UTF 8 is the dominant character encoding for the World Wide Web. Accounting for 87% of all web pages, the Internet Mail Consortium, IMC, recommends that all email programs be able to display and create mail using UTF-8, and the W3C recommends UTF-8 as default encoding in XML and HTML. Let's go and do that. So I'm going to first go to my folder, Documents, Mr. G website. I'm going to right click open with notepad. And in the last one I had to keep zooming in my last video. I guess I was silly. I really should have formatted this font and made it something bigger. So we could see better. That might be too big because now we can't read everything. And you can do the same thing when you're working on this if you can't see everything so good. Make it bigger, but then as your page gets longer, you can't see as much of it. So you might then want to reduce the font. Okay, so inside of our um, head element up here, we are going to add that code that was on the slide. So we're going to type uh, open angle bracket link our relationship is it's a style sheet what type of style sheet it's a text CSS style sheet and what's the name of it basically each reference main dot CSS and if you're saying well gee I don't have that file yet you're correct we didn't make it yet but we know we're gonna have to link to it and then we also wanted to add our meta character set which is abbreviated as char set equal to and in quotes UTF dash 8 close the quotes close our angle bracket. Okay, so we're going to save this. And now that we have this saved, we need to create our CSS file. So we're going to close this out because in the next slide I'm going to show you how to create the CSS file. An external style sheet. Now that we have our HTML file linked to a CSS file, let's create a CSS file with some CSS code to see our styling take effect. Type the following into Notepad. Again, it's going to be a new Notepad file. So we're going to style our P tag. So P and then curly brace, color red, text align, colon, center, semicolon. And just to point out, we have the curly brace up here next to our P. It could have been below it. This color red could have been right next to it. This curly brace could have been on the end here. So there's lots of ways to do it. You'll see different ways people write it, but this is probably the most common way. The curly brace after the P and then enter to give you a new line, color red, and then every declaration is on its, is on its own line and then the closing curly brace on its own line as well. That's just the most common way. 
We're going to save your file as main.css to the same folder that contains your index.html file. In real life, they aren't really saved there, and people probably use a very good organizational structure because their websites probably have lots of data, so they have lots of folders in which they organize their stuff. But then the code becomes a little bit more, I guess, complicated to write. So to keep things as simple as possible, we're putting everything in just our one folder. It makes the code easier to write. It may not be the best way to do it, especially for a big website, but for learning, it's probably the best way. When we're done, we're going to open your index.html file in a browser, and your paragraph text, not anything else like headings, should be red and center aligned. Using an external style sheet in this manner is the preferred way to style an HTML document, a web page. An external style sheet provides a method for styling all of your pages the same way so your website looks consistent. So let's go and uh, do that. So open Notepad if you remember, and we only did this once because we've been right clicking and choosing open with, but we're not going to do that now. We have to create a new file. So to get, so to get Notepad open, it's the start button all the way down to Windows Accessories. Click that and then find Notepad. Okay, so we're going to type P and then a curly brace and then enter. Most of the times we tab things over. Well, that's a big tab. Well, oh, that's a little. So let me just hit space. I'll hit a couple of spaces. And then do color colon red semicolon. And then space this over. So I did three. Text hyphen align. There are many, many, many properties that you can assign. Sometimes they use hyphens, sometimes they don't. You just got to kind of remember. Actually, you don't have to kind of remember because you can go to a resource like W3Schools and they'll have a list of all types of properties for all different types of things. And you can just look at it it's like having a dictionary because there's way too many to remember. Color being red for the font. I mean, color for the font, that's pretty common, and text align is pretty common. But there's many, 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 so trying to remember them all is really impossible. So now that we have this created, we have to save it. File, save as. We're going to go to our documents, find our folder for your website. And this has to be named main.css. And over here, you're going to choose UTF-8 again, and then click Save. And we'll close this out. So now you should see in your folder, you have a main.css file as well. Again, if you don't see the dot, you need to put on file name extensions. So if that's unchecked, you need to check it. It really helps when you're doing a website because these extensions are meaningful to how things, how things work, especially hyperlinks. Okay, so now if we go and open this in a browser by double clicking on it, you'll see that my first paragraph is now red and in the center because, and to open the main uh, .css, if you double click it, it's going to open most likely in a program called Dreamweaver on your computer because that's the default. So right click, open with Notepad. And the reason why it's red and center aligned is because that's what we said to do for anything that's a P tag. So if we go and open our index in Notepad as well, drag this over, you'll see that our paragraph says, my first paragraph. It says, in the CSS file, make all paragraphs have a color that's red for the font and their text align being the center. And that's why you see this in the center and it's red. Okay, so we've 
successfully created a CSS file and had it linked to our HTML file. But now there's a few more things to show you. So let's go on. Just three more slides. There's such a thing as an internal style sheet. Different than an external style sheet, obviously, hence the name. An internal style sheet may be used if one single page has a unique style. Internal styles are defined within the style element, and that's inside the head section of an HTML page. We're going to open your index.html file and add the following inside the head element, but after the link to the external style sheet, main.css. So we're going to add this style, paragraph, color blue, and then close the style tag. When we're done, we're going to save your index.html file and then open it in a browser, and your paragraph text should be blue and center aligned. Note that the external style sheet made the paragraph text red, but it was overridden to blue by the internal style sheet, hence the term cascading style sheet, meaning the properties that you're doing as far as like your colors and your font sizes and your alignments. If it's called out once by one thing and then after that comes another call out, the thing that comes after is the one you're going to see because it overrides the one that was before it. So let's take a look at that. So I'm going to right click on index, open with notepad, and inside of our head element, but after the link. So after that, we're going to type open angle break bracket style close the angle bracket and then we're going to p then we're going to p <laughs> we're going to hit p and trying to line that up with the with the curly brace so here maybe and we're going to say color blue and then we have to close our curly brace and then we also have to close our style tag so slash style okay then we save this and then we open our index page in the browser and you'll see now that it's blue if I refresh this page you don't actually see it because it happens really quick but if we had a really slow internet connection or if you had this huge picture that was being loaded and then going over it with red or your background being white and then a picture loading over it you could actually see the picture loading and the white being behind it and that's actually happening right here in that sorry in that your style sheet that's linked to it main.css by the way, you could name it anything you want over here. That's just what I chose. But whatever you name it in here, or whatever you say you're linking to in here, better be with you name it in your folder, otherwise it's not going to find it. So anyway, in this main.css, we said to make the color red and the text center align. But after this whole line comes this thing. So this then overrides that because this comes next. So it's like reading an order. It's cascading down the page. Okay. If we were to take this out, so I'm just not going to retype it. I'm going to cut and then paste. Okay. When this page is read, it says, hey, make the paragraphs blue. But then it goes and links this. And in this main thing, it says makes the par make the paragraphs red. So let's save this and then go back and refresh our page and you'll see the paragraphs now red okay so that's what they mean by cascading and I think it would actually be silly to have it this way because why would you want to call out a color and then have it controlled by your main however there are instances where the main sets up everything and then you just want to change one particular thing on this page and so you do that here and you say okay I know all my pages we have um, all paragraphs in red and center aligned. But on this particular page, for some reason, I don't want my paragraphs to be red. I want them to be blue. 
Now, I don't think it's a good idea to make them red or blue. They should just be black text. But this is just showing you how to style things and how things cascade. Okay, so it really should be here. I'll save it again. And then I'll go and refresh this page. And it's back to being blue. And what really happens in the background is when it reads the main.css, it makes it red. But then right after that, it reads your style tag and makes it blue. So the blue goes over the red almost instantaneously. And that's why you see the blue. Okay, let's go on to our next part of our slideshow. Inline styles. So yes, there's another way you can style something. An inline style may be used to apply a unique style for a single element. To use inline styles, add the style attribute to the relevant element. The style attribute can contain any CSS property. Open your index.html file and change the paragraph element from, right now it just has that call out title equals blue tide. So that's not an, that's actually not like styling it, that's just applying a title. So an attribute inside of the p tag, because we were learning attributes in our HTML. HTML, yeah. Okay, we're going to change that to inside the opening p tag we're going to add style we're going to say color green and then title blue tide then we're going to save your index.html file and open in a browser and your paragraph text should be green and center aligned note that the external style sheet made the paragraph text red but it was overridden to blue by the internal style sheet and then overridden again to green by the inline style an inline style loses many of the advantages of a style sheet by mixing content with presentation. So we really should use this method sparingly. That's kind of what they did originally when they tried to style web pages, and it didn't really work great. Um, so it's still there, you can do it, but again, use it sparingly. So let's go and do that. So inside of our p tag, we're going to add style equals and then in quotes because inside of our tags we use the quotes up here we don't use them um, and I think if you leave off the quotes it pretty much works they say that it wouldn't work would not work right for older browsers but I don't think any of us are going to be using an older browser so we wouldn't really know but you should do the right way uh, because you never know who would could be using an older browser so we have style color is green right colon green so if we save this and we go back to our web page and just refresh it notice you don't have to close it and reopen it you can just hit refresh you'll see now that it's green so it became red got overridden to blue got overridden to green and if you want you could put more than one style in here and the way you do that is you end this with a semicolon and then you add another one so if I wanted to say text align and put it back to the left colon left and actually it should have a semicolon at the end all the time anyway save this and refresh and you'll see that the color remains green but now it's aligned to the left so you can add multiple properties in here um, when I did just color green I should have had the uh, semicolon here but I kind of forgot it but as you can see browsers are very good at interpreting what you want to do even if you forget a little something not always Okay, there could be a problem, but if you do forget something, lots of times they'll still work. But you should do it the right way. So I added the semicolon here and here, and that's how you separate different properties. And the whole thing is enclosed in your quote marks right here. Okay, so I think I saved it already, and that's how you get that to work. So we'll go on to our next slide, our last slide actually. And this is just basically a a recap or a conclusion or a summing up cascading order what style will be used when there is more than one style specified for an HTML element 
Generally speaking, we can say that all the styles will cascade into a new virtual style sheet by following the rules where number one has the highest priority. The inline style always overrides every, anything. That's the one we just did, the last one with the green. The external and internal style sheets in the head section come next, and that all depends on which one comes first. So whichever comes first, if there's an external style sheet and then an internal style sheet, as I showed you, the internal style sheet will go over it. If it's the other way around, then the internal style sheet comes first, but then the external thing goes over that. So be careful how you order them in your head section there. And then, of course, if you don't use any styles at all, the browser, again, browsers are amazing programs. They have some built-in defaults, and they're going to read your HTML page and just say, all right, they didn't tell me what to do, what color to make this, and how big to make that, so I'm just going to do whatever it is I like to do and be done with it. And not just say, oh, I can't show you your, your web page. They'll still show it to you. It just may not look very nice without any styling. So an inline style inside a specific HTML element has the highest priority, which means that it will override a style defined inside the head tag, or in an external style sheet, or a browser default value. Lastly, if you just use an external style sheet, which is best for consistency, you will not have to worry about any cascading order rules, and your website will look nice and consistent, which is the way a lot of people say it should be. They call that web standardization, so that when you look at a website, the background colors and the font sizes and all that are consistent from one page to another. And that's the way uh, people who do professional web design or web development really want it to look. Um, again, doesn't have to be that way, but that's the way things are supposed to be done, especially corporate-wise. Thank you very much. Goodbye.